in the light of the 21st century. Get ready for the future. Power up. With guaranteed low prices in every department at Fry's Electronics. Fry's Electronics was a chain of American big box retail stores founded and headquartered in Sunnyvale, California. In 1972, Charles Fry sold his family's namesake chain of Fry's supermarkets and gave a portion of the proceeds to each one of his three sons. This amounted to about $1 million each. His three sons, John, Randy, and David Fry, teamed up with a fourth partner named Catherine Calder and came up with the idea of opening an electronics store. And in 1985, Fry's Electronics was born. Come to Fry's this week for the Great American Pie Sale. And John Fry's idea was to create an electronics store that was modeled from grocery retailing, of which the brothers were already well familiar with from the family supermarket business. What most people don't know about Fry's Electronics is that the original store still sold groceries, as well as the high-tech gadgets the name is now known for. Up until this point, the Fry's name was already well known for selling food items, such as the ones being offered in these old TV commercials. In the beginning, the original Fry's Electronics store still sold numerous grocery items, such as fresh produce, but the idea of selling groceries quickly faded away as their electronic merchandise became more popular and was reduced to only the sales of soft drinks, potato chips, and other snack items. If you've ever been to a Fry's Electronics store, then you've probably noticed that they stocked a surprisingly large variety of candy and other snack items near the checkout registers, and this is why. The Fry family had deep roots in the grocery business, and this part of the business never fully went away. They were well known for this enticing selection of grab-and-go food items, which the chain sold until the day they closed. Fry's Electronics was one of the first retail stores to sell off-the-shelf microprocessors, such as the Intel 286. This was the fundamental difference between Fry's and other stores that led to their success. You could buy individual computer components instead of just pre-built machines. Even the earliest stores sold individual computer components and became extremely popular with do-it-yourself computer nerds looking to save money by building their own systems. They became very well known for not only the large variety of computer and electronic components they stocked, but also the other stuff such as t-shirts, magazines, and food items. The store advertised itself as the one-stop shop for the Silicon Valley professional, since customers could find both electronics and groceries under the same roof. Fry's even had a company mascot named Charlie Chip to remind customers of what they were best known for. As the business grew, the original Sunnyvale store eventually closed and a newer, larger store was built nearby. The second store began another very popular Fry's Electronics trademark, which was the amusement park style designing of its stores. The second store was designed to look like the interior of a giant computer, the walls were covered in circuit components, the floor resembled a giant printed circuit board, and the exterior of the building was made to look like a huge dip integrated circuit. Fry's quickly became the most popular name in retail for electronics and computer hobbyists, as well as for enterprise professionals. Their stores appeal to everyone, from computer gamers to radio and 12 volt electronics hobbyists. Not only did Fry's stock the usual consumer electronics such as computers, televisions, stereos, and appliances, they also stocked even the most obscure of electronic cables and components, and this is what they became well known for. They offered in-store services such as computer repair, custom computer assembly, and mobile car electronics installations. To sum it all up, the baby boomer generation had Radio Shack and now millennials had Fry's Electronics. The early 1990s marked the beginning of the gold rush era for computer retailers around the world, and Fry's was in the perfect position to benefit from the exploding consumer demand all across America. It wasn't long before the mid-90s arrived and Windows 95 was being hyped by Microsoft with what was probably the biggest marketing campaign in history at the time. 
every computer user in America couldn't wait to upgrade their old computer or buy a new one. The mid-1990s kicked off an explosive market boom for the computer and software industries. Windows 95 was the missing puzzle piece that was now being put into place and launching America into the online world. The internet revolution would soon arrive. What I find ironic about this period of retail history is that the new computers, software, modems, and other items being pushed onto consumers by electronic stores would help to enable the beginning of the end for much of their own physical retail business. They were unknowingly helping consumers to get online and to break away from their own physical retail stores as a result. This was the calm before the storm. Consumers were gearing up for the next phase of their lives, the transition to online shopping. In 1996, Fry's Electronics bought out Incredible Universe, which was another big box electronics retail chain owned by the Tandy Computer Corporation. Incredible Universe was facing serious competition from emerging competitors like Best Buy, Circuit City, and CompUSA at this time. The expense of staffing and operating such large buildings while remaining competitive and profitable wasn't something that Incredible Universe could figure out on their own, so instead they sold all of their stores, with six of the best ones being handed off to Fry's Electronics. This purchase allowed Fry's to easily take over and convert the huge buildings already put into place by Incredible Universe, expanding Fry's business into several new markets and eliminating one of their biggest competitors at the same time. The original circular designed entrance of the Incredible Universe stores were easily noticeable at these Fry's locations, such as this one in Sacramento, California. For great gifts at low, low, very low prices, come to Fry's, your electronic wonderland. No longer confined to just the state of California, Fry's Electronics quickly became a household name in many major cities all across America and a formidable competitor in the electronics retail space. This full-featured Panasonic DVD player is only $699. Fry's had a strategy of purchasing large buildings in more affordable areas of town, relying on their customers to make long treks to get in on the Fry's experience. Many of their stores featured coffee stands or cafes to help entice customers to visit and stay for hours on end. Going to Fry's wasn't just a trip to the store, it was a day trip experience. Their ongoing practice of outfitting stores with outrageously cool and unique amusement park style themes paid off big time. It was a genius marketing move, and as more stores opened up, the popularity of Fry's famous themed stores would grow. Even in the era before social media, word of mouth spread around quickly after each of Fry's latest themed stores opened up, with locals sharing pictures of the experience with friends and family. The gimmick of creating these super cool themed stores worked incredibly well, and many customers would flock to these locations to see it all for themselves. Most customers will never forget the themed exteriors and intricate in-store displays that helped make Fry's so popular and unforgettable. This Fry's location in City of Industry, California had an industrial revolution theme and featured huge gears and valves on the exterior of the store. This store in Burbank, California was outfitted with an alien invasion theme that featured an alien spaceship crashed into the front of the building. It also featured several gigantic character displays inside of the store, such as this giant octopus thing bursting in through the wall, and these Mars Attack style space aliens. Giant ants from the movie Them hung from the ceiling, and popular characters from movies like Star Wars were displayed throughout the store. The location in San Jose, California had a Mayan theme. The store in Campbell, California had an Egyptian theme. 
the San Marcos location had an Atlantis theme. The store in Fountain Valley, California had a Roman theme. The store in Phoenix, Arizona had an Aztec theme. This fries location in Las Vegas, Nevada featured an exterior that looked like a giant electronic slot machine. This store in Houston, Texas was themed after the local oil field business. It featured a vast array of oil field workers hanging out throughout the store. This store in Webster, Texas was located near Johnson Space Center and was outfitted to look like a space station. The arrival of the new millennium brought serious trouble for retail stores in America. The booming computer and electronics market of the 1990s was gone, and department store sales seemed to have reached its peak around the year 2000. Shortly after this point was when the death of retail stores in America began. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, Department store sales in America began a serious decline in the early 2000s, and as the years ticked by, Fry's Electronics suffered badly as a result. The lightning-fast expansion of high-speed broadband internet, along with the shift of consumer habits towards online shopping, started taking a toll on American brick-and-mortar retail stores. Today we'll show you the growing power of the internet on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Consumers were becoming increasingly more comfortable with the concept of online shopping, and retail store foot traffic started rapidly declining. The Great Recession of 2008 was an event that helped thin the herd of American retail stores and kill off a few of Fry's biggest struggling competitors, other big brand names such as Circuit City and CompUSA. This period would prove to spare Fry's electronics for the time being, but in hindsight, it should have served as a very loud wake-up call for the quickly approaching trouble ahead facing brick-and-mortar retail stores all across America and the world. Unfortunately, Fry's Electronics was a latecomer to the world of online shopping. After several failed launches of online shopping websites such as Outpost.com, Fry's eventually settled on Fry's.com, but the confusing branding caused lasting damage and put them far behind their competitors in the fight for online shoppers. Fry's seems to have really struggled with the transition from an old school retail store and into a more seamless online and retail hybrid experience. In comparison, companies like Best Buy handle the transition into online sales much better and seems to have really invested a lot more time and money into attracting online shoppers and providing a seamlessly integrated shopping experience that helped bridge the gap between their website and their physical retail stores. In my opinion, this is where Fry's made a big mistake. In fact, if you take a look at old snapshots of the Fry's website, you'll see that it didn't really change much as the years went on, and there is little evidence of any real effort they put into modernizing their site. Many people have their theories about why Fry's eventually failed, but in my opinion, this is a big reason why. Compared to its competitors, Fry's failed miserably at transitioning into the online shopping era, and it would prove to cost them big later on. As of August 2014, Fry's Electronics operated 34 physical retail stores in 9 states across America. In 2015, Fry's Electronics celebrated their 30-year anniversary, and things still seemed to be going pretty well for the majority of their stores. Little did anyone know that in about six years, Fry's would no longer be in business. Look at this. It's just the empty shelves. Around the year 2019, the internet began seeing an influx of people posting pictures of half-empty shelves and deserted aisles at Fry's Electronics stores all across America. Theories and guesses began swirling, and the future of Fry's Electronics was clearly in serious jeopardy. 
Reddit users reported seeing empty stores even during the height of the Christmas season when they would normally need to fight for empty parking spaces just a year or two before at the same store. Articles from various news and business publications began flooding the internet and warning about the upcoming demise of Fry's Electronics. In September of 2019, Fry's management addressed the reports of empty shelves by announcing changes in the way they would sell their products going forward. Fry's claimed that they were moving to a consignment-based sales model and that store shelves would be restocked within a few weeks. However, as time went on, it was obvious that the shelves were only getting emptier. Sadly though, Fry's Electronics employees were beginning to talk in private about their hours being cut back and that they were being kept in the dark about the company's future. It seemed that nobody really knew what was going on outside of the top levels of company management, not even Fry's own in-store employees. The collapse of Fry's seemed to happen rapidly, beginning with their store in Duluth, Georgia, which suddenly closed down without advance notice during the 2019 holiday season. A few more popular Fry's Electronics locations shut down in February and November of 2020. During this period of time, the Fry's management team would continue to insist publicly that they were not going out of business. On the evening of February 23, 2021, various internet sources began reporting that Fry's employees had been given notice that all remaining stores would close nationwide and that Fry's.com would shut down at 12 a.m. Pacific time. Fry's Electronics finally called it quits and officially ceased operations on February 24, 2021. An official public statement was immediately posted on Fry's.com and mentions challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic for being a reason why they closed. However, their challenges began long before the pandemic. Despite all of the warning signs and years of viral photos showing empty shelves and stores, it seems that most Fry's customers were still caught off guard and did not take the closure well. It was like finding out about the death of an old friend. Comments all across social media, Reddit, YouTube, and Twitter clearly show the deep pain coming from a generation of Fry's customers finally letting go of all hope that the once popular chain could pull itself back up from certain death. The closure of Fry's Electronics represents the closure of the big box retail store era and the continuation of brick and mortar retail decline. The collapse of physical retail stores in America and around the world is a tragedy, and those of us who grew up visiting these stores, spending hours shopping and dreaming, we are very lucky to have witnessed the American retail boom before it succumbed to e-commerce. So, what went wrong and who is to blame for the failure of Fry's Electronics? There are countless opinions on this, but the truth is that their demise was likely unavoidable given their apparent unwillingness to change strategies. Their failure to fully embrace online shopping sooner while continuing the unwinnable strategy of staffing and operating their gigantic retail stores even after foot traffic collapsed, both played a major part. Fry's did not seem to pay any attention to what their competitors were doing in order to attract customers in the age of online shopping. They failed to acknowledge the writing on the wall and the drastic changes in consumer shopping habits. Instead, they just stuck to what worked for them 20 years ago and suffered a slow and painful death as a result. It seems that Fry's did not learn any lessons from the untimely demise of Incredible Universe and find ways to avoid suffering the same fate. For example, Fry's could have consolidated their stores into smaller and more easily accessible locations after foot traffic had been trending downward for years. The Fry's brand was still incredibly popular at the time of their closure, but they were just too far out of reach for many customers who found it easier to shop online or at a more local electronics store. Sadly, it's highly unlikely that Fry's Electronics will be the last major American retail chain to close. We still live in a world where some stores think a consumer wants to spend $30, for a gold-plated HDMI cable after all. The failure of Fry's should serve as yet another wake-up call to all American retailers. 
This is another sobering reminder that someday soon, the simple act of seeing and touching a product in person before you buy it may become impossible to do, and someday soon, the experience of an excited child visiting a toy store may become obsolete. Fry's Electronics now joins the ever-growing list of beloved retail stores that have now become nothing more than distant memories and internet folklore. These old stores now stand cold and empty all across America, but the hopes and dreams of what they once represented lives on forever. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to press the like button. And please also be sure to subscribe and enable notifications if you enjoy this kind of content.